just north of Austin, Texas. Mark Honig, Dan Weiss, on behalf of our entire crew, we welcome you to Central Texas. A must-win game for the Austin Spurs. Meanwhile, the LA defenders looking to close it out and get a matchup with Sioux Falls in the D-League Finals. C.J. Washington puts the ball in the air. Kiefer Sykes has it, and we are underway. Well, Ken McDonald and the Austin Spurs really want to set the tone here early in the first quarter. Their last two first quarters in the playoffs, they've been held to below 20 points. Nice jump hook. Good start for Deshaun Thomas, who had 18 points in the game one loss to the L.A. Defenders. And in the last game here against the Defenders at Cedar Park Center, 10 of 14 from the field, he had 25 points, a big night for the third-year pro. Great pass from Gomes to Harper, and Justin lays it in. Justin had two 10-day call-ups with the Detroit Pistons earlier this season. Talented player out of Richmond, and we're tied early on. No good on the Thomas jump shot, rebounded by the L.A. defenders. Los Angeles coaching staff telling us they have to do a good job rebounding tonight if they want to get a W. Yeah, they were 15th in the regular season in rebounding, and, and Austin was in the top three in rebounding. So that's an area of concern for Casey Owens. But if they can let Deshaun Thomas take outside jumpers, they'll live with that all game as a shot from the perimeter is knocked down by the former NBA veteran Ryan Gomes. And the 2016 Impact Player of the Year. Los Angeles up 4-2, to two, nearly 90 seconds gone by. Here's Washburn. Shooting over Ingram. So the LA Defenders head coach Casey Owens looking on. His first season as the coach, but he's been part of the organization for the last couple of years. And boy, Mark, he has made a journey through the NBA D League over the coach of his career. Here's Thomas, good position against Gomes. Finds the open man. Nice ball rotation. Here's Washburn's three. The Austin Spurs really struggled from beyond the arc in game one. They were only four of 20 from outside. They were a minus 22 in point differential from the three-point arc alone. So that's that's an area where if they're going to have success tonight against L.A., they're going to have to knock down their three-pointers. Foul on Brandon Fields, the guard out of Nevada, acquired in a trade with the Idaho Stampede about midway through the season. And now Machette with the handle. What a season for him as Vander Blue scoots free for the easy lay-in. Yeah, and that's that's too easy for Vander Blue. Brandon Fields has got to do a better job on ball defender. Nice block. And the defenders up tempo. Vander attacks. The defense there. And Vander, who's gone to the free throw line more than any player in the D League, was arguing for that foul right there, attacking the basket. But let's take a look at his previous trip as he cuts right into the lane and gets around Brandon Fields. Easy layup for Vander Blue, the former Golden Eagle out of Marquette University. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, just an outstanding regular season, an NBA D League All-Star, and a handful for any team. Here's Thomas down the lane. And you get the sense right now, Mark, that this is going to be a matchup between Blue on one end for L.A. and Deshaun Thomas on the other end for Austin. And which player has the better outcome is probably going to lead his team to victory. Pass a little bit behind Harper. Finds Gomes from 15. Around and out. And Washburn collects the rebound. Spurs down to 6-4. to four, Three minutes gone by. The defense by Majette who led the D-League in steals this year. And he really anchors their offense, Josh Majette. Where he goes, where he goes, typically that's where their offense goes. The corner three, knocked down by Justin Harper, who's a big guy who's got some range, Mark. He shot it at 39% from beyond the arc in the regular season. And even better against the Austin Spurs in six games, 14 of 33 from long distance. Caddy LaLanne slips free and lays it in. Caddy Lalane, the former second round pick by the San Antonio Spurs. And he had some big games against the LA Defenders in the regular season as he had 21 points in their last meeting here at home. There's Harper again. Not this time. And Lalane with the rebound. 
Nine to six, LA. Fields. Great pass, layup is good for Brandon Fields. Well, that's textbook passing, Sykes, Thomas, and then Fields running the baseline. Good execution in the half-court offense by Ken McDonald's club. If you remember in game one, Kiefer Sykes had already taken three shots by this point in the opening quarter. He has yet to shoot the ball. Harper is fouled. You mentioned the passing. Well, the, by you know, the Austin Spurs. What's great about the passing ball, ball doesn't touch the floor here. As Sykes picks it up, there's Thomas, and one quick pass running the baseline to Brandon Fields. Easy layup cutting to the interior. And that's what coaches always say about great passing. If the ball doesn't touch the floor any time in that sequence of passing, you're probably doing something pretty good. Ray Acosta, the official directing traffic, he's out there tonight with CJ Washington and Vlad Boyard Tudal. Harper at the foul line, outstanding at the stripe this season, 89%. And right on cue, he rattles that one out. What was interesting, we showed in the open, Vander Blue went to the free throw line 18 times in game one, but the two teams actually shot an identical amount of free throws, 30 in that first game. LA was a plus four. Second one good for Justin Harper, who's off to a great start, six points. He was clutch for the defenders down the stretch with 12 fourth quarter points, 10 in the final six and a half minutes to engineer that comeback win in game one. Yeah, fifth year pro out of the University of Richmond, was a former draft pick by the Cleveland Cavaliers. As a look at Ken McDonald orchestrating from the sideline for the Austin Spurs in a must-win situation here in this game two of the best of three Western Conference Finals. Yeah, winner moving on to face Sioux Falls. The Sky Force haven't lost in the postseason, 4-0. Kiefer, nice pass, slam dunk, Caddy Lalane. Well, Caddy Lalane, who you mentioned, is making his first appearance in the starting lineup since March 20th and taking advantage of it right off the bat. And, and if you're Austin, inside right now, you've got the edge against the LA defense, and I think for Casey Owens, it's about making adjustments to those inside guys. Lelaine and Thomas have been a handful so far. Majette drives against Sykes. Combs nearly threw it away. Vander, no good. That shot clock was winding down. He had to put up a low percentage shot. Then he doesn't get back on defense, and Washburn makes him pay. Great diagonal pass, and the Austin Spurs in front, 12-10. We talked about setting the pace for the Austin Spurs. Bad first quarters in each of their last two games, but a good start for them tonight. Gomes unable to hit from long range. As we approach the midway point, quarter number one. Deshaun Thomas has been very active for Austin here in the first quarter. Jump hook, no good. But Caddy's there to keep it alive, and it's chased down by Gomes. Yeah, and that should have been an offensive rebound for Caddy Lalane. Again, rebounding a key for the defenders here, and they've been hurt on the boards early. Majette, no good on the little, little teardrop. Well, you get the sense right now that, that Austin has LA playing at their pace in the half court, not getting out in transition. That's where Austin wants this game tonight. Washburn leans in, follows his own miss. Julian Washburn has his season average of four. He was inserted into the starting lineup a couple of weeks ago. He's the best on-ball defender for this Austin Spurs team. He was signed with the San Antonio Spurs in October before being assigned up the road here to Austin. Brandon Fields calls the timeout. 14 to 10 our score. We've crossed the midway point of quarter number one. Back to Austin right after this. ESPN's coverage of the NBA D-League playoffs is presented by Taco Bell's new Quesalupa. It has everyone talking. What are you waiting for? And in part by State Farm, we exist to assist.
Spurs leading the defenders 14 to 10. Starters looking good for Austin, but they've got a lot of help on the bench. Well, like their parent club, the San Antonio Spurs, there is no one player on this Austin team that does it all. They are a collective whole. As you take a look in the postseason, 10 players average more than 15 points per game. They've had a different score in three out of the four games, and eight of their players have figured in double digits so far in the postseason. And what's interesting about these two teams is you'll see Ken McDonald go to his bench a lot. And he utilizes them, whereas on the other side, Casey Owens really relies on his five starters to eat up a lot of minutes and get a lot of points. Spurs ball, 10 to shoot. Deshaun Thomas against Gomes. There's the double team. Fields for three. Back to game one. The Austin bench outscored the L.A. bench 34 to 19 in that game. But the defenders still coming out on top, 102-97. Uh, keep in mind the difference in the first game was a 31 to 18 start for the defenders in quarter number one and Austin was playing from behind pretty much the entire game. Spurs 7 of 14 from the floor. Los Angeles 4 of 11 from the floor. Spurs out rebounding Los Angeles 9 to 4 so far. Five minutes to go opening quarter. Again trying to establish down on the block there's Deshaun Thomas. He's been active here early in the first quarter. Nice drive and banks it home right around Ryan Gomes. Yeah, and again, there, there is a reason why Deshaun Thomas has had so much success against the defenders this season. Big body, active along the block. He's posted double figures in every meeting. Vander Blue can't get it to go. Kept alive by L.A. as Shumpert into the ball game. Couple of other substitutions to tell you about. Nick Johnson into the game for the Austin Spurs, the former Arizona Wildcat and Houston Rocket. Lamar Patterson checks in, as does Walter Tavares and Dimitri McKamey. Yeah, interesting about uh, Lamar Patterson and Walter Tavares, they are both assignees from the Atlanta Hawks. So even though the Austin Spurs are owned and operated by the San Antonio Spurs, of course, there's that relationship between the Spurs and the Hawks. Mike Budenholzer, the head coach there in, in Atlanta. So you've got some familiarity in the front offices and the coaches. That's why Tavares and Patterson are here in Austin. Yeah, by way of the D-League flexible assignment rule. Patterson nearly has his pocket picked. Got away with a push. McKamey penetrates. Nick with three seconds lays it in. Nick Johnson. Former Pac-12 Player of the Year, as you mentioned, at the uh, University of Arizona, second year pro. And former draft pick there, the Houston Rockets. Largest lead of the night for the Austin Spurs at eight. 18 to 10, Majette. Defense of three seconds here against the Austin Spurs will send L.A. to the free throw line. Well, as we take a look at the upcoming NBA D-League national TV schedule, the Austin Spurs are hoping for this game tomorrow night. It would be the Spurs and the L.A. Defenders. That's Monday night, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central here on ESPNU. Well, the Defenders were third in the D-League in free throw shooting this year, Mark. It 78% and they've already missed two of their first three trips to the line here early on. DJ Shumper. Now Ingram sets and fires. Count it. Andre Ingram. He's a pretty good three point yeah, shooter. No guy likes the uh, perimeter shot more than Andre Ingram, the league's all time leader in both three pointers made and three point field percent, uh, three point shooting percentage. Ninth year pro Andre Ingram just fills it up from outside. It was two for four in game one from long range. Five point game. In and out. Nice back tap. Nick Johnson to Patterson on the baseline. Nice dish and Endoy lays it in. Yusu Endoy, the seven footer out of St. Bonaventure with his first field goal. Austin's approach has been outstanding. They're drawing in the defense and then pulling in the bigs inside into the paint, getting those passes through. And if you can get high percentage shots in the postseason, you're doing something good. 251 left to play in the first. 20 to 13 Spurs in front. As you're watching the 2016 D-League playoffs presented by Taco Bell.
first quarter here at the Cedar Park Center just north of Austin, Texas. Spurs leading the defenders 20 to 13. Spurs, of course, the 2012 NBA D League champions. And guess who they defeated to win that title? <laughs> yeah, the LA defenders, uh, some familiar names to, I think, NBA fans who are watching this contest. Malcolm Thomas, Julian Wright, Justin Demon. All three games were won on the road. That Austin team coached by Brad Jones, who is now an assistant with the Utah Jazz. And under the guidance of the head coach of the Jazz, Quinn Snyder, who is also a former head coach of the Austin Spurs. Yeah, and the lead assistant for Brad Jones that year was Taylor Jenkins, who's currently an assistant coach with the Atlanta Hawks. Majet with the floater. No good. Endoy the rebound. Los Angeles just 5 of 14 from the floor so far. The rebound by Holyfield, who just checked out, checked in. Michael Holyfield did not play in the first round series against Reno, but did play in game one. Vander Blue, nowhere to go. Holyfield forces one up. Shot clock did not reset. Gomes blocked by Tavares. Now the defense inside for Austin has been outstanding and, and a big reason why LA is five for 15 right now to start this game is that, that there it's a challenge for them every time they're putting a shot up. They're not getting any gimmies here. Patterson cross court McCamey catch and shoot three. Got it. That's a great sign for Austin. McCamey can get going. He is their leading three point shooter comes off the bench. But I tell you what you know he shoots it at just under 38 percent from beyond the arc and if he can get going early then Austin can really counter LA from the perimeter. Holyfield count it and give him a free throw. Michael Holyfield played his college ball here in the Lone Star State at Sam Houston State. What's interesting right now for the Austin Spurs, Ken McDonald has two seven footers out there and used to end and Eddie Tavares. And he has not used that strategy much at all this season. Well, and I think, you know, that that puts a lot of pressure on L.A. as far as taking the ball to the basket and getting to the free throw line, which is what we know they like to do. He's going to force them to knock down some perimeter shots to kind of balance out those bigs on the inside. McCamey on the drive. Count it and give him a free throw. Nice take by Dimitri McCamey. Played his college ball at Illinois, grew up in the Chicago area. And he can flat out drive. Right, here's a great take here as gets around the screen and Majette a little bit slow. Trailing the play defensively and over the top. <laughs> How about that? A DJ Shumpert inside to get that one to go. Also an outstanding foul shooter. Close to 90%. Knocks it home. Spurs back in front by 10, matching their largest lead of the contest. Majette. Dribbles through the lane, nearly a steal. Eight to shoot. And let's check the call, Ray Acosta. One thing about these D-League officials, they really do a great job of communicating amongst themselves. And that's why every NBA official. And they're gonna call an offensive foul. Every NBA official has to start in the NBA Development League now. So they cut their teeth here. Looks like Yusu Enjoy had the, I'm gonna get his jersey being tugged onto right now, and that was the call there, the offensive foul. Into the game, Kenneth Speedy Smith. 6'3", 180 out of Louisiana Tech. Average 13 minutes per game in the regular season, three points, three assists. He had six points in game one. Inside a minute to play, opening quarter. And so Austin's gotten into that bench here for LA early, which is certainly interesting and certainly to their advantage. Shot clock at six. Whistle and a foul. Tavares is a large target at 7-3. 265. Yeah, and he rolls off the screen right there and Pretty good setup and drawing the contact inside. Tavares will earn himself a trip to the free throw line. Eddie Tavares, 24 years old. 
was actually discovered by a German tourist in 2009 from his native Cape Verde. Number one in the D-League in blocks at 3.4 blocks per game. He was actually the first Cape Verdean-born player to ever be drafted into the NBA when he was selected 43rd overall by the Atlanta Hawks back in 2014. Spurs by 11. Make it 12. Nice touch for the big fella. But you're right, Mark. I mean, Austin has really gone to their size and length here in the first quarter. Again, really forcing L.A. to beat him from the outside. Gomes for three. Nothing falling. Seven second different shot clock and game clock. Yusu Endoy doesn't care about the clock. alley -oop. And he got a little shove after the fact from Michael Holyfield who looked frustrated as L.A. certainly has been as a unit frustrated in this first quarter. Outscored by 14. And Vander Blue with just two points in this quarter. He had 33 in game one. Speedy Smith, nice pass. Shot clock violation, wave it off. Ken McDonald wanted to travel before the shot. Let's take a look at the last alley-oop here. And once again, it's the Austin Spurs in transition. And how about running the floor there and finishing it off, Yusu Endoy. And Pretty. while we were watching Endoy, there was a technical foul called on the L.A. defenders. That means Dimitri McKamey goes to the stripe. The tech was on Josh Majet. Ryan Gomes was over to the officials trying to plead the case. Well, they added a little bit more time. So three seconds left in a first quarter that has been dominated by the Austin Spurs. McKamey at the buzzer doesn't get it off. But what an opening quarter for the Austin Spurs who outscore the LA Defenders 31 to 16 in a must win game to send this to game three. We're back to the second quarter right after this. Thank you. 
start of the second quarter, game two of the Western Conference Finals, 31-16 Spurs, thanks to some great interior play. Well, they just dominated in the paint in that first quarter. And, you know, when you can get off high percentage shots like Austin is at will, you're going to shoot 60%, which is what they did in the first quarter. A couple of highlight reel alley-oops to finish off. Austin outscoring the defenders 22-6 to in the paint so far in this game. Yeah, they had more points in the paint than Los Angeles did points. In fact, Los Angeles with a new season low for points in an opening quarter, it was 17. And that happened back in February against Idaho. But Justin Harper will have none of that. He splashes home his second three. He's got nine to keep the defenders alive. Good set play to start the second quarter for the defenders. They needed to kind of, you know, bring the tide back a little bit to their game. And you knock down a perimeter shot, you know, gets the confidence going a little bit here. I expect Austin and Ken McDonald to do exactly what they did in the first quarter. And it's interesting, Mark, you know, it was 31-18 LA after one quarter the other night. Almost a near identical role reversal here in game number two. Remember, the Austin Spurs came back in that one, actually had the lead in the fourth quarter. But Los Angeles outscored Austin 9-zip to close the game and held the Spurs scoreless for the final 5-15 of the game. Endoy shot rejected and a jump ball. Nice if you're just joining us, welcome. We're at SWBC Court here at the Cedar Park Center just north of Austin, Texas, Mark Honig and Dan Weiss. I was just going to say a little bit of an adjustment right there on that last play inside the Endoy. Holyfield came over and essentially joined what was a triple team down low on the near block. And, you know, that prevented Endoy from getting off a, an easier shot there. Draws him into the jump ball. And I think you always talk about adjustments in games for coaches. And I think Casey Owens recognizing, like everybody in the building, that they need to do a better job on interior defending here if they're going to have a chance to get themselves back in the game. Well, these guys are fighting for position here. <laughs> and the jump ball controlled by the L.A. defenders. Well, one thing for L.A., they averaged the fourth most three-point attempts in the D-League this season as on cue knocking down one from the perimeter on the right side was Speedy Smith. They're going to wave it off, or they're going to call it after the fact. Going to call it after the fact. A loose ball foul, on Michael Holyfield after the basket. So Speedy Smith drills the three, and a good start to the second quarter for LA. Two three pointers, three pointers already. Harper, and now Speedy. Well, they fire it up a ton from outside, no question about it. Shooting at 35 percent beyond the arc in the regular season, and in the postseason. Uh, they're right there at 35% too. Thomas is back out on the floor, baseline jumper. No good. And the rebound to Los Angeles. Nice crossover, speedy caught in the air. Here's Majette. Majette through the lane. Nice block, Ingram rejected by Lamar Patterson. Good job by Lamar Patterson. Tailing the play the entire way and great contested defense there on the outside. Lamar Patterson just back from the Atlanta Hawks here. Big defensive play. Harper airballs the three. Well, the best way to follow the D-League playoffs and top prospects is on the NBA D-League app. Available on all Apple and Android devices. You can watch playoff games and highlights. Go to the App Store. Download it now. Well, Austin has gone to their bench here, which we know they do, as we talked about on several occasions already. But for LA getting into their bench here and trying to get something from those reserves, key in their attempt to get a comeback. Sykes. No good on the three. And the rebound, Speedy Smith, 31-22. Los Angeles trails, Harper's open. No good, nice offensive rebound and a traveling violation on Holyfield. Well, he got the position inside, but he took one extra step in trying to reposition himself to throw that one back down. And 
That's a that's a bad turnover when you're trying to get your rhythm back and trying to get a little momentum going. And you've got an opportunity to throw one down. You don't get that. And that's that could be a big swing potentially just to four points in itself. Now those are ones that I'm sure Casey Owens a little bit frustrated with, but that's a hustle play too. He was salivating trying to go up and slam that one through. Just a little too anxious for the play. Shot clock down to seven. Sykes. Fields is open. No good. I think that hit the backboard. Yeah, de it definitely did. He was he was hoping the bank was open late on a Sunday night, but not even here in Central Texas. Two and a half minutes gone by, second quarter. Ingram back to Majette. Majette, a long three. In and out. And Patterson the rebound for the Spurs. Ken McDonald, in our chat before the game, said that Majet was able to do anything that he wanted in that game one. Fields rattles it home. And a foul on Holyfield. Well, Fields tried to put one off the glass a moment ago. Now he takes it inside and he gets the friendly roll on the rim and the end one with a foul on Holyfield. You can see Holyfield holding on to Tavares there, trying to keep him off the glass. Back to Majette. He had 14 assists in game one. And Ken McDonald said he was able to do whatever he wanted, weaving his way through the heart of the Spurs defense in game two. And if necessary, game three, he wants to make sure the Majet is forced to shoot. Well, and I think the one thing that you got to give credit to Austin's defense is they're taking L.A. deep into the shot clock on every possession so far in this half. And 22 points right now already for L.A. is well off where they should be for their season average. Majet three. And that one's good. But as you mentioned, with three seconds on the shot clock. I mean, th those Ken McDonald can live with that. Those are low percentage shots on the perimeter. Granted, L.A. is going to take a lot of them, but very deep in the shot clock. That's to Austin's pace and to their tempo. Majette with 84 three-pointers made in the regular season. Kiefer Sykes now. Fields, spins, fires, no good. And the rebound batted around and controlled by the Spurs, but then lost by Deshaun Thomas, who gets a nice round of applause from the fans in the front row. All right, Ken McDonald, he'll, he'll applaud those plays all the time. You win those 50-50 balls, it just shows a little bit of extra hustle. You get the sense right now, Austin recognizes the importance of clearly needing a win here, and they're playing like it in the first half. Good crowd tonight here at the Cedar Park Center, and they're into it. Majette, another three. Rimming, no. And Holyfield called for another foul. Well, not much off the bench anyway in the first place for L.A., but when your bench players get into some early foul trouble, too, that doesn't help either. As Holyfield will make his trip back to the L.A. bench. So D.J. Shumpert replaces him. Shumpert, 6'8", 190 from Cal State San Bernardino. He started at Arizona. Caddy to Brandon Fields. Washburn back to Fields in the corner. Deshaun Thomas three-pointer is not there. And the rebound by the shortest guy on the floor, Majet. Everything but the, the basket there for the Spurs. Great ball rotation and you know, an open jumper for Thomas. 14 to shoot. L.A. down by nine. They trail by as many as 15. Led by as many as five. Harper, nice up and under. And he'll earn a trip to the free throw line. As we mentioned in the opening quarter, an outstanding foul shooter at 89%, but he did miss one in the first quarter. Vander Blue, who has started this second quarter on the bench for L.A., and he's getting a nice rest here, almost to the halfway point of the second uh, quarter. Just two points for Blue so far to start the game. On one of four shooting. Harper hits the free throw. Justin Harper leading all scores with 10. And he's got one more. 
For the Spurs, Kiefer Sykes, Brandon Fields, Deshaun Thomas, Julian Washburn, and Caddy Lalane. Shumpert, Harper, Smith, Ingram, and Majette, the lineup for the LA defenders. And I think what's interesting with Vander Blue on the bench, LA's a plus seven right now and pulling to within seven points. Thomas, short, and Los Angeles loses it out of bounds. Timeout on the floor with 6.49 before intermission. Spurs, 34, Los Angeles, 27. Friday night, the NBA playoffs continue with three game threes at 7 Eastern on ESPN. It's LeBron and the Cavs taking on the Pistons. At 8 on ESPN2, the Hawks square off against the Celtics. And at 9.30, back on ESPN, the San Antonio Spurs battle the Grizzlies in Memphis. All games streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. How about the defenders here in the second quarter? Yeah, good job from the outside. You know, this is where we know their bread and butter is offensively. They live and die with a three-pointer. They're 5 of 11 so far in the first half, and, and they've cut into the 15-point Spurs lead, all with Vander Blue on the bench, although he's back now out of the timeout. Los Angeles outscoring Austin 11 to 3 here in the second. Vander Blue, no good. Follow dunk by D.J. Shumpert, his first field goal. And it's a five-point game, 34-29. One of the rare opportunities on a putback there for L.A. Thomas muscles it up and in with the left hand. He's got eight. Vander Blue back to Harper. Speedy lost his footing. Great pass. Harper's reverse layup is good. He's the one guy right now that's causing some issues for the Austin Spurs because of his size, because of his perimeter shooting. It, it's a tough defensive matchup because he can take advantage of you both on the inside and the outside. He's got 13. Caddy finds Thomas. No good. Gets his own miss and draws the foul. And meanwhile, on the other end, Deshaun Thomas just continues to be tough as nails on the inside. But here's Justin Harper again, rolling off the screen. Thomas lost him back out of the perimeter, and that's a nice little up and under. They get the basket. Great pass by Speedy Smith. A little English there by Harper with the left hand, and Thomas to the foul line. 79% on the season. 
Rattles that one home. He's got nine. Had 18 points, three rebounds, three assists in game one, averaging 23 points here in the postseason, which is up from 15 during the regular season. Yeah, and the Austin Spurs have been struggling from the free throw line in the postseason, only at 72%. They were almost about 77% in the regular season. Sixth overall in the D-League. Two for two for Deshaun Thomas. Seven point game, 38 31. And on that note, they're seven for seven to start the game tonight from the charity stripe. Vander Blue, great pass. Shumpert didn't realize how open he was. Rejected by Caddy Lalane. Shot clock did not reset. Smith has to force. No good. And then Fields has it go right off his shin. But again, this is going to be a one second left on the shot clock because. The shot did not hit the rim, and Austin didn't have possession on trying to gain the rebound. So now they're going to call a shot clock violation and say the shot, act the shot clock actually completely expired. That's a good call by the officials getting together. They're going to refer. They're going to get together and, and change this call. They'll put one second on the shot clock. Well, see, I you know it's interesting because I thought the shot went up with exactly about one second left. They're discussing, but they're going to give him one second here. So watch the lob pass to Gomes. Vander Blue to pass it in from the baseline. There's Gomes. Another air ball. That's the third 24 second shot clock violation against L.A. here in this first half and again just speaks to the defense of the Austin Spurs right now. Yeah, I think you made a good point earlier in the quarter that this is a team that loves to get up and down yeah, the floor. Yeah, I mean I mean 31 points more than halfway through the second quarter. I mean, this is a team that's in the postseason they're, they're averaging 114 points per game. In the regular season they averaged 111. They have a hard time hitting 75 the rate we're going. Washburn, Thomas, Caddy Lalane is foul. Correction. Yeah, I think he just bounds. lost it off the, his leg there Kevin on the way Connell back up. Decided to jump in front of me on that last play. We should whistle him for a foul, don't you think? Well, you could just jump back up over him too, Mark. <laughs> Ken McDonald has been pretty calm on the sidelines tonight. Well, when you're up by seven, I think that's that leads into it a little bit too. Vander Blue to his right. Tough shot for the D-League's leading scorer. Second field goal of the night. Vander Blue has four. And the lead is just five. 38-33. Spurs the lead in the ball. Caddy Lalane stripped. Fields lost his footing. Smith. Penetrates, sets up Gomes, extra pass Ingram. No good. Los Angeles has had some very good looks. And that's a shot that Ingram makes probably seven out of ten times with no defender in sight. Yeah, it's interesting. Speedy Smith only played 12 minutes in, in game number one. He's getting a lot of action here in the first half. You're right, you know, they, they've had some looks, they just can't hit it. And then Austin not protecting the basketball in the front court. Inside four minutes to play, second quarter. Gomes, fade away. And a foul on Caddy Lalane. Let's take a look at uh, why Vander Blue has been amongst the best players in the NBA D League all season, attacking Caddy Lalane and going sky high off the glass there. And oh, in. Over two Austin defenders. And, and we've said it a couple of times, you know, every time LA's tried to take it inside, these have been tough shot opportunities. And that was that was no gimme there either for Vander Blue. Endoy and Nick Johnson back in for the Austin Spurs. But 15 I, to shoot. I'll tell you what, if, if you're Casey Owens, you're down by five right now, you gotta be pretty happy with the result of this game to this point. Combs open for three. 
Much better form on that one. Took his time and drilled it. And that's where LA's gonna get you. That's their sixth three-pointer in the game. And you can you can live from the three-point line. You can get back into the game in a hurry, and that's exactly what LA's done in the second quarter. Brandon Fields spins, hangs, and hits. Tough shot for Brandon Fields, spinning in the lane to get that one to go down as well. Gomes backing down to Sean Thomas. Speedy down the lane. Nice pass. Shumpert blocked again, but scoops it up and scores. Yeah, he absorbed some contact on that first trip to the basket. No call, but now Austin's starting to contest those three pointers. The lane is opening up a little bit for LA. Follow dunk, Endoy. Six for Yusu Endoy, but Vander runs it right back and gets to the free throw line. A back and forth pace here at the Cedar Park Center. Up top, Gomes drills the three. But the Austin Spurs able to answer. Keeper sikes the drive and the follow dunk. Spurs 42-38. Austin Spurs leading the LA defenders 42-38, and here's what's at stake. A matchup with the Sioux Falls Sky Force in the D-League Final. Sioux Falls 4-0 in the postseason. Just defeated Canton 117-85 to take that series two games to none. Game three, if necessary, in the Western Conference Finals would be tomorrow night, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. Here at the Cedar Park Center, Spurs need to win tonight to force that game three. Been a tough first half for Vander Blue. Really out of rhythm, just two field goals, but this is where he makes his living at the free throw line. He set a D League record this year by going to the free throw line, made 349 throw ins from the charity strike. That, that number is outstanding. It's crazy to think that a guy at six foot four leads the league in free throw attempts. It speaks to how aggressive he is with the basketball. Well, LA has switched their defense. They're going to a little bit of a zone here late in the first half. Trying Shot to clock at six. Trying to take away that inside play from Austin. Keeper's going to have to manufacture something. Count the basket and a foul. 
Well, Kiefer Sykes has been pretty quiet in this game so far. 0 for 3 before that last shot. Interesting look out of the timeout uh, for LA. They go to the zone, and in a zone, you're forcing obviously either a, an off ball shot or, or an open look from the perimeter. And, you know, deep into the shot clock, that's a heck of a shot there by Kiefer Sykes to get the and one. And a chance here, as you mentioned, for a three point play and a five point lead for Austin. You know, in Mark, I mean, this, this game has been defined right now for Austin. They're a plus 18 in the paint. Outscoring the defenders 30 to 12, but LA is a plus 15 from beyond the arc. Six three pointers to Austin's one. That, that's your game story right now. Spurs by five, 45 40. Inside two minutes to play, opening half. Another defensive three second violation. That's the second against Austin. Tuesday, our countdown to the NFL Draft continues on ESPN at 7.30 Eastern. The next episode of Hey Rookie, welcome to the NFL. Then at 8, it's another NFL matchup draft special. And we wrap it up with a double shot of Gruden's QB camp, Penn State's Christian Hackenberg, and the Buckeyes' Cardell Jones. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. How about the LA Rams just shaking up the top of the NFL Draft? Big trade with the Tennessee Titans to get that number one pick. That's a way to make yourself relevant out in Southern California. Start with a splash, right? Speedy Smith off the heel. And the Spurs want to run. Brandon Fields, jump stop. Count it. Nice pass by Nick Johnson to lead Brandon. And the Spurs by six, 47-41. Nice shot by the Spurs. Didn't allow LA to get set in that zone, pushing the pace right off the shot, and an easy bucket. Gomes, that went halfway down. That's the second time or third time tonight that Shumpert has had an open look, but has been hesitant to put it up. He had that one play in the paint. And there he had a 12-footer that he passed on. Spurs throw it away. Speedy Smith. Spurs are doing a great job, especially going up tempo. Yeah, and right here, Optimus shot doesn't allow to LA to get back and get set defensively. And a nice take by Brandon Fields. Where again, the Spurs have been living is inside the paint here in this entire first half. And a good, good, solid first half for the home side. I think there's a misconception that this Austin team likes to walk it up the floor and dump it in. They were a top five scoring team for the first half of the season. It's been more of a personnel issue. Nice lob for the cutting Yusu Endoy. Well, they're becoming Lob City part two here tonight. The number of alley-oops that have gone up top for Endoy in this game. Vander Blue, knifes inside. Gomes rejected by Endoy, loose ball. Yusu, the seven-footer to McKamey, throws the lob. Errant pass. Uh, you go back to the well too many times, Mark. Uh, eventually, the defense is going to pick up on it, but not this time. Again, nice job there, drawing the penetration, and Endoy get, goes up top to get the feed from McKamey. Oh, and the Austin Spurs are going to have the lead at intermission. And Endoy's got eight points, four field goals. Three of them are alley-oops in this first half. Foul called on Nick Johnson. This is a nice job by Austin closing out the first half as they're on a 7-3 run here. And LA will take the last shot. Shot clock turned off. Nine seconds left in quarter number two. Sykes defends Blue, who flips it up. No good. Follow dunk Shumpert with 2.2. Sykes from midcourt. Way short. Halftime here at the Cedar Park Center. The Spurs leading the defenders 49-43. Coming up on the halftime report, Kobe's last game and Baron Davis with his return. Spurs by six at intermission.
Welcome back to the NBA D-League playoffs presented by Taco Bell as we get ready for the start of the third quarter. Spurs leading the defenders 49-43. Mark Koenig with Dan Weiss. As we take a look at the bracket, Sioux Falls has already punched their ticket to the D-League finals. They come out of the Eastern Conference with a 4-0 record. And Los Angeles leads this best of three series, one game to none, but the Spurs looking good in the opening half, up six. Yeah, they were looking fantastic. And as we expect from the Austin Spurs, they're a collective unit, and they get nine out of their 10 players in action involved. And it was just about everybody from every way, shape, or form, from the backcourt with Sykes and Fields attacking the basket, and then the bigs, they got involved too as well. In the interior, Deshaun Thomas and a big first half leading the way for the Austin Spurs with 10 points. And then up top for guys like Washburn, Lalane, and last but certainly not least, Yusu Endoy attacking the basket. Uh, the Austin Spurs dominating the paint mark. As we take a look at the first half stats, Spurs shooting 51%, LA 35%. You can see the three point shooting edge by the defenders connecting on six of them to the Spurs. One points in the paint. Dominant performance by the Spurs, 34 to 14 in the bench points. Again, Spurs with more points off the bench than Los Angeles and Vander Blue at 33 in game one. Yeah, and I think that's the difference. Vander Blue, actually when he was out to start the second quarter, Mark, that's when LA started to make their run to trim into that 15 point first quarter deficit. But he was out of rhythm in the first half, two for eight. You can't ask for a better defensive job against Vanderblue, but you know he's going to find a way to get his points, get his way to the free throw line. And we'll see how the Spurs defend him in the second half. But if you're Kent McDonald or the Austin Spurs right now, from the offensive end of the floor, I think I think you're doing exactly what you set out in your initial game plan. Execute, attack the basket, attack the rim on the boards, and clean it up. And the Spurs have done a good job so far tonight. We're underway in the second half. Glad you're with us from the Cedar Park Center, just north of Austin, Texas. 10 to shoot for Josh Majette. Finds Gomes. 17-footer is good for Ryan Gomes. But that was, again, something that was a common theme in the first half, that every possession LA had, or just about every possession, they went into the final few seconds of the shot clock before getting an attempt off. And another turnover for the Austin Spurs. Although, they're going to give the ball right back. But they're going to get the ball right back as Vander Blue stepped out of bounds on the far sideline. We had two ties, two lead changes in that opening half. In game one, there were seven ties and 13 lead changes. First quarter went to the Spurs 31-16, but the LA defenders come charging back in the second, outscoring the Spurs 27-18. to So here we are early in the third. 49-45 now Spurs. And again, a difference of, of approach. For Austin, it's about the paint. They were a plus 20 in the paint in the first half. For the defenders, it was about the perimeter. They were a plus 15 in three-point scoring. Kiefer Sykes can't get the roll. He's more effective when he attacks the basket instead of settles for those jump shots. That one did not fall, and Vander Blue. Now it's Ingram. Andre Ingram leans in and hits the 15-footer. That's a rare two-point basket for him. The D-League's all-time leading three-point shooter. Thomas at the foul line, guarded by Gomes, drives against him. There's the double team, spins away from it, and unable to connect. Nice outside-inside move, though, by Deshaun Thomas. He opened it up for a pretty easy five-footer that just wouldn't fall. Vander drives against Washburn. Harper rattles it home. He was the one guy I thought that was consistently good from start to finish in the first half. Harper leads the way 15 points, five of eight from the floor right now. And believe it or not, Mark, as good as that first half was for the Austin Spurs, we're all tied at 49. Nearly two minutes gone by here in the third. You were saying in the closing moments of the second quarter that Casey Owens probably had to be pretty pleased, all things considered, that his team was still in the game. Well, your leading scorer so had, close. had four points, made two field goals. I, I mean, you were getting killed inside, and yet you find yourself in the game. Thanks because of that three-point shooting. Caddy Lalane muscles it up, but no good. And now, LA has a chance to take the lead. 
Vander Blue, 18-footer. No good. And there's no question, he's out of rhythm right now. Vander Blue can come down, can knock down those 15-foot jump shots, and it's just not falling for him. And that's good news for the Austin Spurs as going to tack to the basket there by Brandon Fields. He's going to earn himself a trip to the foul line. Vander Blue, maybe a little bit frustrated. Had an outstanding season, but if just joining us, averaged less than 18 per game in the five regular season meetings with the Austin Spurs. And the last game here, boy, he really struggled, Mark. He was only four of 12 from the field. He had eight points, and he did not go to the foul line one time in that single game. That's kind of funny, though. I mean, you, you just talk about certain players. There are some teams where it's a bad matchup for you, and, and no question, the bigs for Austin make it awfully tough for a guy like Vanderblue to attack the basket and get to the foul line, which is what he does so well. Brandon Fields. Good on the jump shot. Are you seeing anything different here in game two than in game one with Vander Blue? Other than him losing his footing in front of us? Yeah, he's going to call it a timeout. He's frustrated by a wet spot on the floor here. And <laughs> Ken McDonald is, he doesn't necessarily agree. Well, Vander Blue lost his footing and then just looked at the official and said, there's a wet spot, call a timeout, which is usually you got to play through that. And they take care of that. Let's take During a look. the break. Yeah, let's take a look. He's going to slip here. Is right there. His uh, left foot broke. And yeah, he, 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 well, he signaled a timeout. So I would say that's an LA timeout. I don't think he's going to get a an official timeout there because he made the motion. Well, in fairness to Ver Vander Blue, that's about the second or third time somebody has slipped on that part of the floor. If you're not familiar with this venue, it is the Cedar Park Center, where they also play hockey. So this floor sits on a hockey rink. The ice right below us. Vander's still holding his left thigh, trying to stretch out his leg. But you were asking me the difference between game one and game two. For him, he obviously was able to attack the basket at ease in game one because he got to the foul line 18 times. So when you're attacking the basket at will, you, you know, that, that completely changes your approach offensively from one guy. He was also, I think if you take a look at where his scoring came from, a lot of it was set up as well by Josh Majette, who was really anchoring the offense for them in the first half. And, you know, for Majette, I mean, he had one three-pointer, but he only had three assists in the first half, Mark. And I think for a guy who led the D-League and assisted over nine per game, their offensive players are, are certainly not stepping up, I would say, in a closeout game for them tonight. And yet, in spite of all of that, they're down by two points here at the start of the third quarter. On well, visiting with the L.A. coaching staff before the game, I asked him, how many, how many days did you pack for on this trip? And he goes, well, we, we kind of had to pack for the whole trip. But in Reno, when we had an elimination <laughs> game, we only took one suit, but we took multiple shirts and multiple ties. Whether it was the truth or not, Mark, I would almost expect him just to tell you, we packed for one, we expect to be out of here tomorrow. Yeah, if necessary, we can go to the <laughs> store and buy some more clothes as L.A. turns it over. That's the ninth turnover for the defenders. Spurs have eight, so both teams actually have been doing a pretty good job protecting the basketball in this game. Yeah, one final note on Vander Blues that came one as Majette slips. He had 12 first quarter points in that game. Fields draws uh, a late whistle on his attack to the basket, and that's twice Brandon Fields has gone to the basket and drawn contact and gotten to the free throw line. But one thing that's different tonight for the Austin Spurs versus game one is they're attacking the basket time and time again. They're not settling for those outside jump shots. Brandon Fields looked up and saw the bottom of Ryan Gomes' shoes and had his life flash before him for a moment there. So Fields goes to the free throw line, 6'4", 195 out of Nevada. 77% on the season, but that one was off. He came over mid-season, Mark. He started the year with the Idaho Stampede, but at the Austin Spurs, they had Ray McCallum here for a little bit. They had Jonathan Simmons here for a little bit. So, you know, they needed to find some more guards uh, as the San Antonio Spurs called up their players, and that's how Brandon Fields ended up in Austin in midseason. Guys like Orlando Johnson getting D-League call-ups. 
Terrell Eddy. And Bryce Cotton. Nice shot. And L.A. within one. Just Majette's second field goal. And, and again, he's not necessarily a scorer, but again, where he is effective is when he distributes the basketball. Thomas with the floater. And where that guy's effective is when he can do that, get to within about five, six feet of the cup, go up strong and knock it down. 12 for Deshaun Thomas. Shumpert open for three. Spurs will live with that. Eddie Tavares to check in, next dead ball. Caddy's three is off. And I think LA can live with Caddy Lalane taking three pointers as well. Caddy Lalane did not take a lot of three point shots in college. As Washburn gets the rebound. He was 10 of 47 shooting threes in his entire career at UMass. And he connected on 61 of them this year. But Kiefer Sykes able to find the basket. He's got five. Yeah, late rotation by Shumpert. Sykes getting open. Let's take a look at those last couple attacks there for the Spurs. Deshaun Thomas going to the rim and getting up strong there with that left hand to knock it down and then followed up by Kiefer Sykes who finds himself wide open on that late rotation defensively by Shumpert and there was contact as well too. Shumpert fortunate not to pick up the personal. Kiefer Sykes has an outstanding ability to elevate. His vertical has been measured north of 43 inches. Vander Blue, tough shot. And that's what he wasn't doing in the first half, Mark. He was settling for jumpers. Now it's twice we've seen him go to the basket here in the second half. Nick Johnson had the three but didn't take it. Fields sets up Thomas. Lob pass, Eddie Tavares. Oh, they always tell the big fellas, if you're 7'3 and you have a wingspan of 7'9, you do not need to bring the basketball down low. It brings all the defenders into play. I, I, I think he was a little confused on that lob mark. It looked like Deshaun Thomas because he had that open area from about 15 feet. It looked like he was going to take the jump shot. And he caught Tavares off guard with the lob. Twin Towers now in for Ken McDonald. Earlier this season, the San Antonio Spurs assigned Boban Marjanovic here to Austin, and Tavares and Marjanovic were both suited up at the same time. Another slip in the same spot. Vander, hard foul from behind. And Vander blew down after the fact as well. But yeah, there is a there is a lot of moisture. I would guess would be appropriate word on the point right now we've seen a lot of players slip struggle with their footing here and I think Vander's okay I just think he needs a well a minute to collect himself well Vander Blue was holding on to his left groin after that slip earlier in the quarter and I think that oh yeah this play he's, yeah, holding, he's, it again. he's holding it again you're absolutely right the foul on Yusu Endoy Casey Owens is gesturing to the officials to review the call to see if that was a clear path to the basket. Meanwhile, there's a lot of perspiration here on the floor. And, and that brings up a lot of safety concerns for these players. Well, you mentioned the ice below the floor, but also a very humid day here in Central Texas. A lot of storms moving through the area. Uh, that, that hum and we're not meteorologists, but that's a a lot of humidity, a lot of moisture building up for sure. It's warm in the building tonight, no question about it. A lot of hot air between the two of us, <laughs> right? So the officials will go to the monitor, and they'll take a look at this one. Meanwhile, it's 56-53. Spurs leading the L.A. defenders with 6.58 remaining in the third. Here, let's take a look again at uh, what they're looking at as far as a clear path to the basket. Potential foul here, as you see, Endoy reach around and, and, and grab Vander Blue. Looks like Sykes is in front of Vander Blue by a couple of steps. And as you see the, they go back and forth, this is exactly what the referees are looking at right now on the monitor. CJ Washington, the lead official. He's got the headset on. Kiefer Sykes is in front of him before the foul from behind by Endoy. 
So I would be surprised if this was not ruled a common foul. If it is a clear path, there would be free throws and the ball. And that's big right now with Los Angeles down by three, 56-53. And the referee is, you know, bringing out some of the court staff to come out, wipe out some of those spots that have uh, built up precipitation on the court. If you're just joining us, we welcome you to Central Texas. It's game two of the Western Conference Finals between Austin and Los Angeles. If LA is able to get the W, they will move on to the D-League Finals and take on the Sioux Falls Sky Force. If the Austin Spurs can hang on, we will have game three tomorrow night. So Ray Acosta, Vlad Boyard Tadal, and C.J. Washington now confer. And they're having a pretty deep discussion about it, so they're, they're obviously bringing it up for consideration whether it is indeed a, a clear path to the basket foul. This game's been pretty well officiated. We haven't had any issues at all. This is the best part, when they go to the monitor and then they step back for 10 feet and talk about it again. And they, it sounds like they're going to rule it a, a common foul here as we can hear down on press row. Common foul. It, the reason the reason for that is Kiefer Sykes is ahead of Vander Blue by a step. It sounds like they're going to bring the two coaches together, I guess, to discuss what's going on as far as the slippage as well. So an unblemished record in the postseason, and, and now they're sitting and waiting and probably watching us right now, trying to figure out who their next opponent is well, going to be. They're, they're going to get some nice rest in, in between the conference finals and the finals as well. So uh, a little bit of uh, a reward for taking care of business uh, as you would expect they would have done here in the postseason so far. So Vander Blue back to the free throw line. Remember, it was the common foul that was called that preceded everything uh, probably about 15 minutes ago, Mark. So Vander Blue to the free throw line. For Los Angeles, it's a lineup of Holyfield, Gomes, Blue, Majette, and Andre Ingram. Ken McDonald's crew out there on the floor. Nick Johnson, Yusu Endoy, Eddie Tavares, Kiefer Sykes, and Brandon Fields. Blue misses the pair. That's very interesting coming out of the long delay for you talking about Psyche and how it affects different players for Vander Blue to go to the free throw line and miss two free throws right off the hop. That's pretty telling. Nice drive, Brandon Fields able to convert. He's got 11. Gives new meaning to icing the shooter, right? <laughs> Majette to Blue. Let's see if any of these players are tentative at all. Out of bounds. Maybe playing at three-quarter speed. They always say in the NFL, if you don't go full speed, it's almost more dangerous. Well, if you're looking, LA, two missed free throws and a, a, a missed jumper from the perimeter. So while the Spurs get a, a quick basket attacking by Fields, and there he goes down again. And they're going to, I think, wave the players off again and, and try to clean up that spot. Well, I'm curious if the officials have decided that on a slip if they're still going to yep, call it is. the travel. Right there, Brandon Fields goes down and this is going to be a this is going to be a hard decision mark as far as how they proceed with the game at this point. Because they just spent an extended amount of time wiping up the floor and while really? everything has been unusual mark, this will be something even more unusual. We will start a game with a side out of bounds play as opposed to the traditional jump ball. It'll be Austin Spurs ball here where Brandon Fields fell down on that far sideline with 6.15 to go in the third quarter last night. For the Spurs, it's a lineup of Kiefer Sykes, Brandon Fields, Yusu Endoy, Nick Johnson, and Walter Tavares. Sykes has it now, penetrates, kicks right. LA opens back up in that 2-3 zone that they showed a little bit uh, in the second half last night, but Brandon Fields knocks it down. 
And the Austin Spurs with a seven-point lead. And Brandon Fields now with 16 in the game. The lineup for Casey Owens, L.A. defenders, Ryan Gomes, who penetrates right now, puts it up and scores. And that's a much better feeling for him after his performance last night. So Gomes joined out there by Holyfield, Andre Ingram, Vander Blue, and Josh Majette, who's the D-League's leader in steals and assists. Fields just scored a moment ago. Now a 15-footer is off. And a fight for the rebound. All the way out to Kiefer Sites. Five-point game, Spurs in front, 60 to 55. Extra possession here for Austin, and, and they really won the hustle battle last night, winning the 50-50 balls and very good on the boards. Yusu Endoy connects on the jump shot. And Endoy now with 10 in the contest. Spurs again stretch the lead to seven points. We're inside five minutes to go, third quarter. Majette hustles back, finds Holyfield. Wild shot, and Fields has the loose ball. Spurs go up tempo. Kicks right, Nick Johnson hits the brakes. And the Spurs will set it up. Now Endoy last night, Mark, I think all of his baskets, all four of them came from within two feet of the cup. Three of them were on alley-oops. He knocks down a shot from the elbow here for his First attempt from outside. So there is a whistle, and now would be the media timeout under six minutes. However, since we just came on the air, we're going to keep it right here. As we take a look at the Spurs' journey to get to tonight, 30 and 20 in the regular season. Back-to-back -back Southwest Division Championships. They are the number two seed. Reno was the number one seed. More on that in a moment. They had one all-star, Orlando Johnson, who had two 10-day call-ups. However, he is inactive tonight due to injury. They defeated RGV 2-1 in the conference semifinals, losing game one in overtime and coming back to win consecutive games here at the Cedar Park Center. And Deshaun Thomas was a beast in that series, averaging almost 25 points per game and just under seven rebounds per contest. L.A., meanwhile, the four seed defeated the number one seed, the Reno Bighorns, 27 and 23 in the regular season. They had two All-Stars, Vander Blue, who was the leading scorer in the entire D-League in the regular season, and Justin Harper, who's got 15 in tonight's contest, tonight and last night's contest, I should say game number two. They defeated the Reno Bighorns two games to one in the first round. Vander Blue averaged 28 points per game. Now, Vander Blue, in the five regular season games against the Austin Spurs, averaged less than 18 points per game, which is significantly below his average against the remainder of the league. And he had 33 in game number one, came back last night, struggled with his shot. Now, right now, what they're doing is checking to see if Brandon Fields attempted a two or a three. Clearly, his right foot was on the line, so that'll stay as a two-point basket. You were talking about Vander Blue and his struggles against Austin, and they were even, I think, more uh, elaborate last night. He really just was not in rhythm whatsoever. He had a couple of nice takes to the basket, but I mean, even those were tough, low percentage shots, Mark, that he got to fall in that game. He did not hit a single three-pointer, and his perimeter jumper wasn't falling. So if there's one guy who may benefit from this game having to be suspended and then continued 24 hours later, it might be Vander Blue. Also, we should also point out that the court is in perfect condition tonight. Well, it no is, condensation, everything is good. It is significantly cooler in the building tonight too, whereas last night we talked about it was very warm in the building, a lot of humidity rolling in. They have taken uh, a number of different measures here tonight to try to eliminate any of that humidity from coming in because it is still, believe it or not, raining throughout Central Texas here, as it's been all day. Deluge the last couple of days, and lightning knocked out the power to the Cedar Park Center yesterday afternoon as well. So 4.36 remaining in the third quarter with the Spurs leading by seven, and it's the Austin Spurs with possession. Kiefer Sykes, checked by Majette to Nick Johnson. And Shot LA stays in this 2-3 zone here. Sykes has to force. He got bumped by Majette, and he'll go to the free throw line. Majette bailed him out. I want to go back to just kind of the approach by Casey Owens here from the defensive end of the floor. Last night, Austin really did not shoot very well from outside, which is exactly 
kind of what they didn't do in game one in LA as well too. They, they were dominant in the paint as we illustrated at the top of the telecast. And when you go to a zone, you're, you're basically asking the opponent to shoot from outside and knock down some perimeter jumpers before you make adjustments. And I think that's what Casey Owens is challenging the Austin Spurs to do. Make a couple of shots from outside and then we'll go from there. Key for Sykes, 12 points per game during the regular season, but he's really stepped up in the postseason, averaging 20 points per contest. Splits the pair, gomes the rebound. And here come the defenders, down by eight. Spurs trying to force a game three. L.A. trying to close out the Spurs and head to the D-League Finals. Gomes, jumper won't fall in the rebound to Nick Johnson. Uh, moments ago, he hit that exact same shot, so they're, they're looking for Ryan Gomes here early in this third quarter. Kiefer Sykes splits the defense and lays it in. Nick Johnson took a shot in the eye as he stepped in front of Vander Blue there. It appears to be okay as he gets back up. Kiefer Sykes can shoot from the outside, but boy, can he drive. He, he certainly can, and, and he was excellent in the regular season against the L.A. defenders this year in five games, averaging over 13 points and shooting 43% from the floor. But you're right, you know, inside, outside, he's got both elements to his game. Right now harassing Majette at the defensive end. 14 to shoot. Harper was red hot in the first half. Stolen away by Austin. Fields to Johnson. The trailer is Fields, flips it up, and rebounded by Justin Harper. You know, one thing both these teams did a pretty good job of last night, Mark, was protecting the basketball. There was only combined 18 turnovers in the game. Vander Blue, no good. So Los Angeles not shooting all that good during the continuation of this one. Active hands, nearly a steal for the defenders. Fields is open. Justin Harper got caught napping and Brandon Fields snuck around and rolled on the baseline, took a perfect pass inside to put it off the glass and in. Austin, their largest lead in the second half, 12 points. Led by as many as 15 earlier in the contest. Gomes took his eyes off it. And it's a turnover. So we step aside. 2.43 remaining in the third. It's Fields laying it in. Spurs by 12.
Austin leading Los Angeles 67 55 late third quarter as we take a look at Vander Blue. Well for Vander he averaged in the regular season just under 18 points against the Austin Spurs almost 30 against the rest of the D League. He was outstanding in game one with 33 points getting to the free throw line 18 times but in game two he's only gotten to the foul line five times and he made more free throws than any player in the D League this season offensive foul as Deshaun Thomas just checked in and gets called for the offensive foul and Deshaun Thomas was a big reason why Austin jumped out to that 31 16 lead in the first quarter he was outstanding in the first half with 12 points for Austin defenders a lineup of Harper Majette Gomes Vander Blue Andre Ingram who's parked deep in the right corner the league's all time three point shooter Majette double team 10 to shoot. There's Ingram leans in no good and Endoy cleans the glass. Well, LA struggled here. They've just got the one Ryan Gomes basket since we've rejoined action here going under two minutes in the third quarter. Somebody should be open there. And the pass a little bit too high for Yusu Endoy. Spurs turn it over. Los Angeles hustles back. Vander Blue tweaked his groin on the wet floor last night, but he's okay. Gomes short on the jump shot. And that's one of six now for LA. Ninety seconds left to play in the third quarter. And this is a big stretch, I think, for both teams. For Austin, they could really put the pedal against L.A. here going into the fourth quarter. And for the defenders trying to gain some momentum back. Keeper Sykes knocks down the triple. Just the second three-pointer made for the Austin Spurs. So this is a 12-2 run now over the last five minutes since the game restarted at the 6-15 mark. And just like the first quarter, it's been all Austin. Majette short on the three. Endoy the rebound. Thomas isolated on Gomes. Shoots over him and hits. Deshaun Thomas with 14 points. The Spurs with their largest lead of the game at 17. Vander Blue. Gets the roll it, it, again. You know that's that's four field goals for Vander in this game, and they've all been of this wild circus variety that have just found their way into the cup, and nothing's been easy for him in this game. He's had to earn them, that's for oh, sure. For sure. Six second difference, shot clock and game clock. Nick Johnson. Sykes is open. Baseline J. No. Gomes needs some help. I think the key for Austin is they've just shot better here to start this uh, resumption of the game. Nice drive by Justin Harper, flipping it up and in. Well, great drive by Justin Harper there, but for the Austin Spurs, they have come out flying like they did in the first quarter last night. Kiefer Sykes, corner pocket three, knocks it down, and then Deshaun Thomas, who was huge in the first half last night, in the second half gets it going with his first bucket here tonight. Harper had a terrific drive in the opening quarter last night. That one very similar, looking to make it a 12-point game. No good for the 89% foul shooter, but an offensive rebound. And Gomes will go back to the free throw line with .5 seconds left to play in the third. Yeah, Brandon Field's going to get caught with the foul. And, and again, for those wondering why we keep saying the second half tonight and the first half last night, this is a continuation of a game that was postponed with 6.15 to go in the third quarter because of condensation that had built up on the court and the referee and both coaches deciding that they would not continue with the game last night. So but it is but it is odd to keep saying that <laughs> these two teams playing a quarter and a half of basketball with a lot on the with line a lot on the line particularly for Austin because if they don't win their season is over and if they do win then Los Angeles forced to go shopping here in Central Texas because they're going to be here a couple of more days Gomes 
with a pair of free throws. So that counts as four points when you think about Harper and then the two free throws. 72-61, we head to the fourth. It's the D-League playoffs. Start of the fourth quarter here at the Cedar Park Center just north of Austin, Texas, along with Dan Weiss. I'm Mark Honig. Thanks for joining us tonight for the resumption of game two of the Western Conference Finals. Keep for Sykes. And since we resume playing, Austin 6 of 11 shooting, LA just 3 for 9. And the Spurs outscoring the defenders 14 to 8. Caddy Lalane rejected. So for Ken McDonald, Deshaun Thomas, Dimitri McCamey, Caddy Lalane, Kiefer Sykes, Brandon Fields. For Los Angeles, Ingram, Vander Blue, Harper, Gomes, and Majette. Kiefer to pass it in. Here's McCamey catch and shoot. Way off. We talked up last night about the different styles between the two teams and clearly this is the type of pace and tempo that Austin would like to play LA with a hundred points in the game one win 102 to be exact but they're gonna be hard pressed to get to that number tonight with only 61 after three quarters Ingram unable to hit and McCamey brings it up for Austin Thomas awkward shot but it falls 16 for Deshaun Thomas. Now Deshaun Thomas continues to punish the interior defense of the L.A. defenders. Vander turns the corner and finger rolls it home. And that's probably one of the easier layups he's had over the course of this game. He had one off the hop that he split through the defense in the first quarter last night, but I don't think he's had as good of a look as that one right there since that opening look. Spurs by 11 and the Rock. And a steal. There's Majette. Good, good foul by Deshaun Thomas as Majette was off to the races. If Thomas doesn't wrap him up there in the backcourt. Oh 
So they ruled a common foul. And our three officials, C.J. Washington, Ray Acosta, and Vlad Boyard Todal, who did a terrific job last night managing a very tough situation, come over to the side, and they'll take a look at the monitor to determine whether or not it's a common foul and whether or not it's a clear path to the basket foul. Well, certainly it's not a hard foul. We know that. So it, they'll obviously be looking at whether it's a clear path to the basket foul, a foul here as the referee's going to take a look exactly at what we're seeing here in just a moment. Brandon Fields telegraphing that pass, and Majette picks it off, and Deshaun Thomas grabs Majette as he they were starts more, going the other they way. They were more adjacent, side by side. But they'll take a look at that. If it's a clear path to the basket foul, then Los Angeles would get two shots and possession. So in a game when the two teams are only playing a quarter and a half, every possession is magnified. That, that's a big point, especially for L.A., who's down by 11 points right now. This could be a, a, a huge turning point for them if they end up with uh, a five-point swing. If Majette were able to knock down a couple of free throws and then they hit a three-pointer. But I, I, I kind of get the sense, Mark, again, just watching it a couple of times, that it's uh, you've got Majette side by side there a little bit with Thomas. That Now, granted, he did reach around and grab him to commit the foul as if he's going on a breakaway to the basket. So the, the, the intent for Thomas was clearly to try to stop him on a breakaway. The question is, positionally, does it make it a clear path to the basket foul? Well, if this was a horse race and we were drawing a line right there, Thomas would actually win the horse race. I mean, his, his foot he's is ahead. He's ahead of him. Yep, he's ahead of him. This is, again, exactly what the officials are looking at right now. So by the rule of the law, Thomas theoretically in front of Majette he does not have that clear path to the basket. But again, though, the intent by Thomas was clearly to stop a, a breakaway in a fast break layup. And they are going to award Josh Majet two shots. Clear path to the basket. So again, we're going to take a look at it one more time here. We'll take the free throws first, and then we'll take a look at it again and why they are going to award a clear path to the basket foul for Josh Majette. But again, Mark, this is a this is a pretty significant stretch in the game early in the fourth quarter here for LA. Especially when you look at the way that they ended the third quarter. Here's one more look at okay. it. Okay, so again, you see where Thomas is, but Majette is picking it off. And, and again, Thomas's intent is no question to commit the foul to prevent the breakaway. And it would have been, had Thomas not grabbed him, a fast break attempt and a potential layup for Majette. So two shots in the ball, and again, big possession here for LA as they counter and are able to get four points off the hop just like that. Vander Blue laying it in with the left hand. And just like that, from 17 points down to seven, Lamar Patterson is into the game for the Austin Spurs on assignment from the Atlanta Hawks as part of the flexible assignment rule. There's Thomas, spins out of the double team, poked away. It's going to belong to the Spurs. Five to shoot, shot clock did not reset. If I'm the Austin Spurs, though, I, I continue to pound the ball inside to Deshaun Thomas and let him go to work on the block. He's been really effective at attacking Justin Harper, who we should mention, he's got four fouls in this game. McKamey fires the three. No good. And the rebound to Justin Harper. Seven-point game, two minutes gone by fourth quarter. Game two of the Western Conference Finals. Vander drives against Patterson. Lost his footing and turns it over. So for those of you who are not familiar with the NBA Development League and the assignment rules, there are 19 single affiliation teams. So 19 teams in the NBA Development League, all tied directly to one NBA team. That means there are 11 NBA teams without a D-League affiliate, one of those being the Atlanta Hawks. And if they want to assign a player, they send that notice out to the D-League, and the D-League teams have the option of picking up that player. Patterson's got it, six to shoot against the shorter Majette. Patterson flips it up, no good. 
Kiefer Sykes has the rebound, and the Spurs will reset. And in a game again, Mark, a game of possessions, especially for Austin, when you're up here in the fourth quarter, those extra possessions are a killer for L.A. McKamey just missed a three a moment ago. Caddy Lalane is double teamed and fouled. Want to stay up to date on every breakout D-League playoff performance and Gatorade call-up? Head over to NBADLeague.com, your home for D-League playoff news, highlights, and live games. D-League.com. Caddy Lalane, who got the start in this game when it began last night, his first start going back until the end of March, but I think a good idea by Ken McDonald going with the bigs here against the L.A. front line. Shot clock at seven. McKamey flips it up and in off the window. Dimitri McKamey now with nine. Gomes penetrates, flips it up. No good. He'll go to the free throw line. Vander Blue is being isolated time and time again by Casey Owens and the L.A. defenders. And, and, and I think... Blue, no doubt, is the first option, but but they're engaging Ryan Gomes a lot more here in this game. I, a lot more than we saw last night. Clearly the number two option. I mean, he's already taken three shots here in this second half and has earned a couple of trips to the foul line as well. Free throw rolls home. So through the first two and a half quarters, Vander Blue was three of 11, Ryan Gomes three of 12. So. If there are two guys who wanted a fresh start, those two would be the guys. Gomes, free throw, is good. And it is a seven-point contest with 8.50 left to play in the fourth. A little pressure at the midcourt stripe here by L.A. trying to get Austin to get it across the timeline. Harper blocks Nick Johnson's shot, and Vander races out. But we know this will not be a clear path because Deshaun Thomas got back Nick Johnson trying to make something happen but Justin Harper very good defensively no, outstanding running the baseline stride for stride there with Nick Johnson the former Pac-12 player of the year from Arizona Harper was was great from the offensive end of the floor when this game started last night and now playing a little bit more I guess passive I would say on the defensive end because he's got those four fouls blocking foul count the basket and give Vanderbrook Blue a free throw. Deshaun Thomas not buying it, but the call by Vlad Voyard Todal makes it a three point opportunity for Vander Blue. And again, Vander, who set the D League record this year with the most free throws made, this is what he does. He gets to the basket. And especially if he can put it in and get himself an and one opportunity, a chance to bring L.A. to within four. Free throw is good. Timeout, Ken McDonald. Los Angeles fighting their way back. It's now 76-72, eight minutes and 28 seconds left to play.
four point game. Austin leading LA 76 72. And a game that started at 7.30 local time Sunday night. Condensation all over the floor. The officials send out the mop crew. They try to dry up the condensation. The officials get together and decide, we're going to play this one tomorrow and then tonight. Yeah, and it was a great start coming up for Austin here. They opened up a 17-point lead at one point in this game, thanks to a couple of shots from Keeper Sykes. But Vander Blue, as he's done all season, bringing the defenders back into the game. Nine points last night, nine points tonight. L.A. on a 14-1 run here to get back to within four. And outscoring the Spurs 11-4 through the first three and a half minutes of the fourth quarter. Thomas is posted up. Nick Johnson back to McCamey. Five to shoot. Spurs have to hurry. McCamey's going to have to force. McCamey slips free. Rimming. No good. Whistle and a foul. And it's an offensive foul on the Austin Spurs. And a caddy Lane over the top with a loose ball foul. And Wait, it's, it's amazing, Mark, how the momentum of the game has swung in, in literally, it's a compacted game, but even in a matter of minutes, it was Austin that was hitting shots and building a 17-point lead in this game, and now it's L.A. that has come back, has become the aggressor, has attacked, has gotten to the foul line, and now with a chance to get to within a single possession here. Ken McDonald not happy with that last possession, especially out of the timeout. Shot clock got all the way down to one, and McCamey had to force. Machette to Gomes. Handoff pass. Vander Blue attacks again. Hangs, rimming, no. Good job defensively, though, by the Spurs, forcing Blue to fade away from the basket as opposed to attacking inside. Lower percentage shot for him. Four point game. Spurs the lead in the ball. Thomas down the lane, teardrop, no, follow dunk, Yusu Endoy. He did that about three or four times last night, whether it was by Alley Ooper on the putback and big bucket there for Austin. Harper forced off the three-point line, has to try to manufacture something, and good defense by the home team. Yeah, nice job both by Endoy and Thomas, who came over on Harper to cut him off inside the lane. Patterson gives to Kiefer Sykes. Sykes double team. Eight to shoot. Thomas. His pass to flex over to Patterson. Whistle and an offensive foul. Spurs are doing a great job crashing the glass. Yeah, let's take a look. As evidenced by this. Yeah, let's take a look at Endoy putting back the Deshaun Thomas miss and Yusu Endoy, who is just been a monster in this game inside three feet of the basket. Endoy learning basketball from his mother, who was six foot two, member of the Senegalese national team. Nice ball rotation. Harper's open. No good. They're not going to get a better look than that. Harper, though, follows the miss and banks it home. Yeah, a technical foul afterwards has been called against the L.A. defenders. It's a delay of game. Afterwards, as the ball got knocked away. And so, Dimitri McCamey will go take the free throw on the other side of the court. And Ryan Gomes is, is looking at the officials and said, we haven't had a delay of game in some 22 hours. How are you going to call two on us? Free throw good. One more the, look at it, yeah, Harper. Put back by Harper. And then Gomes throws the ball. And that's where the delay game was called. We approach the midway point of quarter number four, 79-74. Here's so, Endoy. Not so sure it was much of a throw, though. Rimming good for Yusu Endoy, who's stepping up big for the Austin Spurs down the stretch. Seven-point lead. Vander Blue. Penetrates, kicks right, Ingram's open. Rimming, no! That's two great looks from the corner there for LA on the three-point attempts. And Harper and now Ingram missing as Vander Blue got the defense to collapse on him. Perfect kick-out pass to the corner. 
Well, you're right, Mark. You said it last night. Ingram, when he gets an open look like that, that's probably eight, nine times out of ten he's going to knock that shot down. If you were able to see him warming up like we did earlier today, he's automatic. McCamey drives against Blue. Bank shot, good. Dimitri McCamey with 12. Back to a nine-point margin. And now it's Austin on a 7-2 run after L.A. had closed to within four. Vander Blue frustrated by the defense and a technical foul. It's on, on Vander, Vander Blue. Blue. Yep. McCamey hit a free throw a moment ago on the technical from the delay of game, and Dimitri will walk down to the other end of the floor. Well, it, it's odd. The, the two technical fouls are on your two leaders as McCamey misses the foul shot. Uh, Brian Gomes before with the delay of game, and now Vander Blue. Take a look at Vander Blue there as he's disagreeing with the official on the lack of a call there inside on the baseline. Time and place, though, Dan. All right, he's got to be smarter. They're down in the game, five minutes and change to go. You can't be just giving up points like that. Fortunate that McCamey missed the foul shot. Gomes, tough shot, no. Loose ball, Spurs pick it up and want to run. There's Thomas, open, knocked out of his hands and stolen away by L.A. Gomes is up ahead. Whistle and a foul. What a great defensive possession by Vander Blue to get back, disrupt that two on one, and get a foul opportunity the other way for LA. Take a look at it again. Look at Vander Blue coming back. He's beaten on the play, reaches around with that right arm, and knocks the ball out of the hand of Deshaun Thomas. And Thomas then throws it away to Harper, and it turns into free throws the other way for the big fella. Justin Harper missed a free throw a moment ago. And this mark could be a four-point swing. Harper, 89% in the regular season. He had two 10-day contracts with the Pistons. Returned to the defenders on March 17th. Again, fourth in the league in free throw shooting with a couple of misses in this one. There's another surprising. They were third overall in the regular season where the defenders as a team from the foul line, 78%, but they've left a lot of points at the line throughout this game. Thomas, jump hook, rattles home. Remember, he's a lefty, so when he gets the ball in that right block, he's going to spin to the paint nine out of ten times. Steal by the Spurs, Endoy. Back to Sykes, Spurs will reset with 18 to shoot and a 10-point advantage. Smart play by Sykes, smart play by the Spurs here. Reset, milk some clock, you've got the advantage. Let's work some time here. Dimitri McCamey with the jab step, double team. Thomas, good job defensively by the LA defenders. As soon as that double team comes, Ken McDonald yelling for his team to move the ball. Well, the idea was a smart one to try to take take some time off the clock there, but, but at the same time, their offensive execution kind of fell apart there at the end of the shot clock. Nick Johnson back on the floor for the Austin Spurs, the nephew of former Austin Spurs head coach Dennis Johnson. Majette around a high screen. Here's Gomes, 15-footer. Not falling now. Spurs up 10, four minutes to play. Sykes draws contact. He'll go to the free throw line. Again, this game started Sunday night. We made it through three and a half quarters before condensation on the floor made the conditions unsafe to continue playing. And now, just three minutes and 56 seconds remaining in quarter number four. Spurs by 10, 85-75. This is the 2016 D-League Playoffs presented by Taco Bell.
NBA D League presented by Taco Bell. That girl was dancing starting in the first quarter. She's been at it for 27 hours straight now, Dan. 85 <laughs> 75 is the score. Spurs a little less than four minutes away from extending this series to a third game. Well, LA got to within four points, 76 72, but since then it's been a 9 3. Austin run is Kiefer Sykes. Heads the free throw line and he misses again. You know, there, there have been a number of free throws that have been missed by both clubs. Both these teams very good from the charity stripe in the regular season. We mentioned L.A. third, but Austin was sixth during the regular season. Second one is good. Keeper's got 12. And the lead is 11. Majet jogs it across. I think the difference, Mark, is we'll get a foul on Nick Johnson against Vander Blue inside. That's only it's the seventh team foul. Number three on Nick. So Deshaun Thomas and Justin Harper each with four. Correction, that was number four on Nick Johnson as well. Vander Blue free throw is good. I was going to make the point before that I think the difference since we've resumed play is the Austin Spurs have done a much better job in attacking the perimeter defensively and not really giving LA the opportunity to hoist up the three point ball. They've only attempted two three pointers here since we resumed play back at the 615 mark of the third quarter. And they've been both open looks, but they've missed them both. Sykes to Deshaun Thomas. Let's see if they double him. Thomas. Jump shot is short. Majette the rebound. Three minutes, 30 seconds left to play. Vander Blue down the lane. Nice up and under. No good. Whistle and a foul. Spurs wanted to travel. A great ball fake there by Vander Blue and got Endoy up in the air. He came back around with his. Left arm and knocked Vander Blue over the shoulder. And a couple more free throws coming up for Blue. Vander Blue, the leading scorer in the regular season, but he gets to the line a lot and he takes some punishment. As aggressively as he penetrates to the basket, he takes some shots. He led the D League in free throws, made the season over seven a game and 349, a D League record during the regular season as he. Box down the first one and, and Ken McDonald these are the these are the types of points you hate giving up when the clock isn't running and your opponent cutting into an 11 point lead here late in the fourth quarter. Blue connects again. The lead is seven. Vander's got 22. Deshaun Thomas. Against Harper, caught in the air, nearly threw it away. Nine to shoot. Nick Johnson checks the shot clock. Nick drives, hangs, bank shot, no. And the rebound to Los Angeles. Tough shot by Johnson, well defended by LA. Good stop there for the defenders, trying to make it six unanswered. Blue unable to hit. Contact in the backcourt, Spurs with numbers, and Majet commits the foul. Jet had to take that foul with the Austin Spurs getting numbers up the floor after Vander Blue fell down with a contact with Kiefer Sykes in the backcourt. That's only the third team foul against L.A. So they've got a couple to give here late. Sykes needs some help. Finds Nick Johnson on the wing. 86-79. Fields to Thomas. Baseline, Jay over Harper. Got it. Big shot by Deshaun Thomas there. Stretches that lead back to nine. And, and again, late in the game, possessions becoming fewer and far between here. Nice lob pass. Harper lays it in from Majet. Good job by Majet leading Harper. Rolled off the screen to the basket. Perfect pass there from the D League's leading assist man and back to a seven point game here. Almost two minutes straight up remaining in the ball game. Keeper Sykes. 
Nick's open. They're daring him to shoot that three. Shot clock down to five. Field straight away. No good. And a nice block out by Ryan Gomes, the veteran of 487 NBA games. Blue cut off again. Machette behind his back. Gomes is open. Big three. No good. And Thomas with the rebound. And again, it was a good look for Ryan Gomes. He's not afraid to shoot from outside. And we get a timeout here by Austin with a seven point lead with 132 left to go in the ball game. Eighty-eight, eighty-one. Remember, Sioux Falls waiting patiently. All three of the travel agents in Sioux Falls waiting to see whether the Sky Force are going to head to Austin or to Los Angeles to start the D-League Finals. Sioux Falls, 4-0 in the postseason after going 40-10 and in the regular season. The LA defenders leading this best of three series, one game to none, Spurs 92 seconds away from evening it up. Now, you know, Sioux Falls is certainly hoping that Austin can stretch this to a third game, put a little more wear and tear on whoever their opponent may be going into the NBA D-League Finals when they get underway in the next week. L.A. outscoring the Spurs 20 to 16 here in the fourth. We've had three ties, two lead changes. Spurs have led by as many as 17, trailed by as many as five. Yeah, and L.A. has not led in this game since it was 10-9 going back to the first quarter. Brandon Fields. And a foul away from the ball. Or that was on Vander Blue. And again, that's only the fourth team foul, so they had they had a foul to give here. First foul in the last two minutes. Minute 29 remaining. 88, 81. Brandon Fields. Check by Andre Ingram. Screen from Endoy. McCamey. Shot clock down to five. Dimitri, long two. Front iron, and Ingram has the rebound. Big stop there for L.A. Because it gets to the point in the game when you get down close to a minute, do you stretch the game out, do you play defense, and nice job there, but coming right back, Endoy with a huge block on the jet. And Austin in command up seven under a minute to play here at Cedar Park Center. I think Majette was just trying to throw that one up and have his teammate grab a rebound. The crowd, which has come back for the second straight night to watch the conclusion of this one, standing on its feet. Kiefer Sykes, layup, no good. Loose ball, Harper's got it to Ingram. 40 seconds left to play. Majette, steal by Brandon Field. Foot race with Vander Blue. And he'll go to the free throw line. Crowd beginning to feel it here. 33 seconds left to go. What a steal by Brandon Fields. Yeah, Majette a uh, little bit out of control. They're trying to push the pace with just under a minute to play. And he coughs the ball up to Brandon Fields and Vander Blue trying to prevent that. Give me two points of Brandon Fields. will send him to the line. Fields can. Stretch this into a three possession game if he can knock down both free throws. 89-81 now. So here's where we stand with 33 seconds left to go. If the Spurs can hold on and win this one, they will even the series at one. And game three would be Wednesday on ESPNU, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 local time here in Central Texas. Timeout called by Casey Owens and the L.A. defenders. Remember, they had a decision to make, Dan, whether they were going to pack for one game or two. Little did we know that they could be here all the way through Thursday. Well, you give a lot of credit to, to Austin. I think they came out and established, like they did last night, Mark, the tone of the game, although it was a little bit different tonight as opposed to last night. Tonight, they knocked down some open jump shots here to start things once we resume play in the third quarter. And they built their lead to 17, their largest in the game at 75-58 before L.A. tried to fight back. They got to within four on a 14-1 run, but just too much 
Deshaun Thomas, just too much. Yusu Endoy down the stretch. Good defense by the Austin Spurs, and they're a half minute away from forcing a game three. Still some time, though. Vander Blue penetrates all alone for the lay-in. Well, smart by Austin. No need to foul right there. And now L.A. trying to extend the game here. They're committing their foul. that will put Austin into the bonus, and both teams will be shooting free throws the rest of the way. Twenty-three seconds remaining. They played five times in the regular season. The Austin Spurs winning four of those games. And now 23 seconds away from being even in this best of three series. Nick Johnson free throw is no good. That ball bounced on the rim about seven times before falling off. Well, I think the comment you made a moment ago is if the Austin Spurs hit their free throws, they should get the W here. Nick Johnson splits the pair. The lead is eight with 23 seconds left to go. Casey Owens calling a timeout. L.A. out of timeouts. So the final 23 seconds, clearly for Los Angeles, they need to hit some three-pointers, and they need to get some steals, and they have to hope that the Austin Spurs miss some free throws. Yeah. Spurs just need to take care of the ball. Well, Spurs need to take care of the basketball here, but three possession game, 23.4 seconds left to go. It's, um, it's not over, but it's looking awfully likely we're gonna be back here on Wednesday night for a game three. Josh Majette will pass it in. The best three-point shooter is Andre Ingram, wearing number seven. There's the lob pass, alley-oop, and a whistle and a foul. So that is exactly what the Spurs do not want. The clock stop and Los Angeles at the free throw line. That, that, that I guess, is the, the worst that you can have happen, is, again, give up those points when the clock is stopped. and. I mean, I would have almost just let Vander Blue just catch that ball and throw it in, uncontested at this point. So the officials are going to review this. So another quirk about the D-League, Ken McDonald can use a timeout and ask the officials to go and review that last call. If the call is overturned, then the Spurs would get the ball, and they would not lose the timeout. This is uh, the NBA's version of the coach's challenge. It is the coach's challenge here. But it also, it serves as an important time for Ken McDonald to gather his troops and, and discuss the next 22 seconds. Casey Owens doing the same with his team, and, and here's what they're looking at. Majette throws the lob pass. And Vander Blue goes up. Nick Johnson does commit the foul. Yeah, it looked like he clearly got him on the hand going up there. Strong was Vander Blue. But if Ken McDonald was going to use the timeout, he might as well try the challenge and try to sneak a well, reversal out well, of it. Well, the, the challenges, I guess, don't roll over into the next game. So no. you get one, you might as well use it. <laughs> I mean, it didn't roll over into the next night either. That's either. true. <laughs> But again, for Austin, you know, they're in a good position here, up eight points. As you mentioned, Mark, if they can knock down their free throws, then they should be able to extend this series to a third game. But you give you give Austin a lot of credit. Responding back from game one, in which they gave up 102 points, they, they got off to a rocky start, giving up 31 points in the first quarter. In this game, too, they held L.A. to their single lowest output in the opening quarter this season with just 16 points. Right. And... The defenders, like the Austin Spurs in game one, playing from behind the whole night and just too good of a defensive effort for Austin, particularly with the bigs inside, Thomas, Endoy, Lelaney, who have all played really strong in the front court. And, and they played with a sense of urgency. They did. They Which, really came out, they understood, hey, we have 18 minutes of basketball left to play to extend our season, and they got some distance, stretching that lead up to 17 points. Now, credit to L.A., the defenders fought back, 
making it a four-point game on a couple of occasions. Well, and, and I think that that's a good point about the desperation because you had to extend that desperation over two nights. It's one thing to kind of have desperation in your mind when you're approaching the game from the start, which is what the Austin Spurs did with their 31 to 15 run to, or 31 16 run to open the game last night but then to come back out and duplicate that knowing your season is on the line nice job by Ken McDonald and, and the Austin Spurs here to finish the game strong still 22 seconds left to go 91 83 is the score and we were talking at length about how this L.A. team likes to get up and down the floor. They averaged 111 points during the regular season, 114 during the postseason, and with 22 seconds remaining in the game, they have 83 points. Well, I think it, last night I said they'd be hard-pressed to get to 75 the way that they were playing and the way the Austin Spurs were playing defense. But, but again, for me, Mark, this is a team that, you know, lives and dies from the three-point line. Last night they knocked down six three-pointers in the first, first uh, 24 minutes, and then the first six minutes of the third quarter they have not hit a three-pointer and, and they've only attempted four since the resumption of play so I think a, a good adjustment by the Austin Spurs Ken McDonald mentioned last night about contesting the three-pointer they have not given up a lot of open looks from outside and I think if there's a formula for beating the LA defenders if there is a game three I, I think the Austin Spurs have certainly found it on the other hand Casey Owens and his staff may have found something with Vander Blue and where to get him the ball on the floor because he's been much more effective tonight than he was last night. Getting him in kind of rhythm as far as catch and attacking the basket. They were trying to spot him up a little bit last night. And I think his, his difficulty was from where he started out beyond the arc last night where he caught the ball trying to attack, you know, the bigs, Thomas and Endoy, where every shot for LA and for Vanderblue was was late in the shot clock was a difficult shot he's had a, a little bit more effectiveness getting to the basket so CJ Washington Ray Acosta Vlad Boyard Tadal taking one more look at it so I think they said no foul, Mark. If I'm hearing correctly, yeah. they did say no foul. That's what I heard, too. Well, so they are overturning the call. Maybe we can get one more look at it. I, let's take another look at this, because from the initial angle we saw, I could have sworn Nick Johnson makes contact with a hand right there of Vander Blue as he goes up. Maybe he goes right through his two hands and hits the backboard there. That's, boy, that's certainly... From that angle, tough to see. Let's see if we get a better look at it here on this angle. It, you know what, that, that's actually a pretty good call by the officials. Looks like Nick Johnson went right through both hands of Vanderblue, hit the backboard. That's why there's video review We're, in and, the NBA deal. That's, that's a good a, overturn call there. And we didn't see that. No, we did not angle, see that, that angle, that yeah. Angle. And, and really a nice job by Ken McDonald trusting his player to come over there because every player says I didn't commit a foul but the players got to come to the coach and say challenge that thing I didn't touch it so side out here for LA so CJ Washington over at the table trying to determine that neither team has snuck out a <laughs> substitute player which has been known to happen over the years so for the Spurs, it's Brandon Fields, Kiefer Sykes, Julian Washburn, who makes his first appearance of the night, Yusu Endoy, and Nick Johnson. Washburn out there for defensive purposes. He'll shadow Justin Harper. Majette inbounds. Ingram, tough shot, no good. Endoy the rebound. And let's see if Los Angeles chooses to foul. They're going to let him play. So Austin takes it into the front court, pounds out the dribble, and we will go to the deciding game three Wednesday night here at the Cedar Park Center. In a game that took two nights to complete, the Austin Spurs beat the LA Defenders 91-83. A nice effort as we take a look 
at the updated bracket. We already know about Sioux Falls making an appearance in the D-League Finals, and now at the bottom half of the bracket in the Western Conference, it is Austin, the two seed, Los Angeles, the four seed, tied at one game apiece. Well, once again, just a real nice job by the Austin Spurs here tonight, and, and really over the course of two nights, Mark, I think they had a great approach and a great game plan last night in attacking the basket and getting their bigs to Sean Thomas and Yusu Endoy involved in the game early. Played with that desperation that you talked about from the start of the game last night and jumping out to that 31 to 16 lead and then coming back out in a, in a very rare circumstance and being able to duplicate that sense of urgency and desperation, build that 17 point lead and hang on for the victory here in game two. 91-83, the final <laughs> score. Coach, congratulations on the win. I, I know this was a, a bizarre situation for you. Uh, your guys clearly came out with a sense of purpose tonight. I can't say I've been part of one of these. Um, so, you know, the whole the whole pregame routine, everything was new. And obviously, if you, you come out and you win, everything looks great. But if you don't come out and win, you're not sure if you did the right things. But uh, I th our guys were really focused. We came out physical, very similar to how we came out last night. I thought that was an important part of it. You know, that game could have been either won or lost in the first, you know, six minutes, to be honest, because uh, going into the fourth, you want to be feeling good about yourselves. And um, some of our guards did a really good job making things tough on Majet and Vanderblue. Uh, we did a better job being attached to shooters with Harper and Gomes who could play. And, you know, those guys are those guys are professionals, and they're going to come back uh, whatever night it is. I think it's Wednesday, and they're going to be ready to play. We need to come out with the same exact kind of effort, and it's going to be it's going to be a battle. Well, you got contributions from a lot of different guys. As we take a look at some of the highlights here tonight, Kiefer Sykes able to penetrate, split the defense, and, and lay it in. Dimitri McCamey flips it up, able to score off the window. And this guy was huge for you over the last two nights. Endoy with some follow dunks, and Deshaun Thomas doing what he's done all season long, pulling up and nailing the jump shot. Unlike the LA defenders, who are very focused on a couple of different guys who have the bulk of the scoring punch. Your team really distributes it and spreads it around, and that's the, the mark of a good team. We do. We, we play through Deshaun a lot because he's a good passer and he's a good scorer. But our, our guards, we like to keep it in their hands, too. There are multiple guards that have, we've, we've added Brandon Fields, and obviously he's an explosive talent, and we want to give him some freedom to, to make plays. And, um, you know, Kiefer Sykes, any time that he's, He's really driving and attacking the basket. He's finished the year so, uh, so well, finishing plays around the rim, and that's a big part. Uh, it's hard to guard. You know, he is a he is a tough guy to guard. Early in the in the series, he settled for jump shots. Now you see him. It's mid range or he's attacking the rim, and that's where we kind of need him at. Is this the pace and tempo that you want to play this team at, and is this kind of the same formula that you want to play them at here in a deciding game? I think it's good that we could do both, but we want to play with pace. They, their depth um, could be a factor in a negative way. I think we're playing into their hands if we're in a half court game and we're not attacking because, you know, they're they're not uh, they're not as deep. They have you know they're playing eight guys and uh, the bigs. We want to get them tired over time and. If we're pushing pace, and obviously that starts with our defense, and that, that starts with getting stops and rebounds. And they did a good job yesterday, uh, offensive rebound, and we did a better job rebounding tonight. So, again, so much, uh, so many more things that we could do, um, do better. Some things that we kind of keyed in tonight. I thought we were pretty locked in, and uh, you know, it's it, Wednesday night. It'll be a lot of focus to not let their best players really, really kill us. Coach, 91-83. We'll do it again uh, in about 48 hours. <laughs> the game that lasted. Uh, Thank the fans that came for 30 minutes. This was uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Well, they didn't have to pay for parking tonight. <laughs> I think a lot of people they thought this was game three. Yeah, well, it was, you know, game, they came and they it was game, game two three. and a half. It Congratulations. Game two and a half. Thank you. 91 Thanks, 83, the final score in a game that took two days and about 28 hours to take place. What a performance by the Austin Spurs rallying. And getting the W, 91-83 over the L.A. Defenders. The important ending, the series is tied at one game apiece as they head to the decisive game number three last night. A wild scene, condensation on the floor, guys slipping all over the place. The officials 
come together, decide we're going to have to do this one again tomorrow night. So the fans come back, the players come back, and it was the Austin Spurs with the intensity tonight. They come out, they did what they had to do, stopping Vander Blue, forcing the decisive game three Wednesday night, 7.30 local time, 8.30 Eastern. We'll have it for you on ESPNU. So long, everyone. Good night from Central Texas.